Today we've got the Dennis Sands assignment revision for the first time. Dennis Sands is mixing engineer in Hollywood, the Avengers, Alice in Wonderland. Zoom is this one here. Gets recorded in the Facebook group, gets recorded in each. We've got 50 people watching live in the group and then the five students in Zoom that are going to receive the feedback directly from Dennis. Hey everyone, Mark Giovanni here. In this video, I'm gonna show you my system to one, teach live classes, and two, broadcast the master classes with guest composers. The number one problem is processing power. So we've got the template and the plugins and the instruments loaded, and also we've got the encoding as well. I'm gonna explain the setup in four steps. Number one, video. I use OBS. OBS gives me different views. Sometimes I wanna show the screen, sometimes I wanna show this camera, this camera. I don't like to use webcams because they don't give me the professional look that I want. I use DSLR cameras. I've got two. One up here for the piano, another one there uh, for like the main angle. They are not USB cameras. They output HDMI. So there's an HDMI cable. Make sure that they have a clean HDMI output. And then what you're gonna need is a capture card, something like this, usually connects USB or it's gonna be internal and where you're gonna connect the HDMI to USB so you can have those different cameras into OBS and build different views. Next, monitoring. In the past, I used to have a small screen here and when I was teaching live, I could see what the students were seeing in this monitor. The problem is that when I'm facing this camera, sometimes I didn't look here and I forgot to change the view. Sometimes you wanna say something important, you're gonna look at the camera, but you are very small because you forgot to switch to the main angle. What I've done recently is I added a monitor next to the camera, so when I'm looking at the lens, I've got a reference down here and I, then I don't mess up the view. Number two, sound. I've tried different solutions for mic. I've gone from one mic on the table to a lavalier mic. The problem with lavalier mic, sometimes it makes noise. The problem with one mic on the table is that you're gonna go from looking at the screen to looking at your main angle, and then if you've got the mic here, you're gonna lose presence. And so what I tried is having two mics. And so when I looked here, I had this mic. When I looked there, I had another mic. The problem is there's too much stuff on the table. So at the moment, what I've got is I move these mics up here. So I've got this one when I'm speaking to the camera and this one when I'm looking at the screen. And that solves the problem for now and keeps the desk as clean as possible. Still, I move around and when I move farther from the mics, if there is a little bit of reverb, then it's more noticeable. So I like to close the space as much as possible to keep that dry, close sound. So I've got this panels that I bring closer when I start teaching. Number three, light. I've got a window over there. Now, when it's open, if there's a cloud or the light changes, with a webcam, it's not that noticeable, right? Because it's gonna readjust automatically the settings, ISO, gain, etc. With a DSLR camera, usually you're gonna have this camera to dial the look that you want. And so usually you're gonna go with manual settings. When the light changes with manual settings, the image is gonna get either overexposed or underexposed if there's more light or a cloud. So what I've done now is I covered the window with an acoustic curtain that controls both the light and sound as well. So this is how it looks when you don't cover the windows. It looks good, but you don't have control if there's any light change. With the windows covered and the lighting, you get a little bit more of a studio look and it looks like this. And it's not necessarily better, it's just different, but I now know that if I cut to another moment in the video, it's gonna look exactly the same. And I've got the three typical lights, a soft key light, another light to light the background and the back light. And number four is the real problem, which is processing. Teaching is a little bit more demanding than just composing when it comes to processing, because you're gonna clock the CPU if you try to process everything with the CPU. So the solution is separate. So what I do is I moved my template to a second computer. So I load all the instruments in a BE Pro server so all the RAM gets loaded there and part of the CPU processing goes there. My main CPU in my computer is taking care of running the Cubase session. Then I've got a few plugins loaded in the template. Those are UAD plugins that are processed in the UAD cards. I've got two octos. And finally, there's the video that I'm encoding twice. One to a streaming, 
to Facebook and YouTube and another one to recording locally. And the solution to that is I use an NVIDIA card that works very well with OBS and moves the encoding processing to the NVENC processor to the graphics card itself and not to the CPU. All right, so that wraps up my setup for teaching life. And I know it seems a lot, but understand that I've been teaching since 2011. I started at Berkeley. Back then I just had a webcam. It hasn't been until recently that I started adding more things for two reasons. One, to give more value. And two, because sometimes those classes get used as material that we are gonna post later on in the course. And two additional quick things, I posted a rough version of this video in the group, and there were two questions that I didn't address during the video. One is internal audio. How do I route the internal audio from Cubase to OBS? And it can be different if you use Windows or PC or Studio One, Logic, Cubase. With Cubase and Windows, it happens to be a little bit more difficult because Cubase takes hold of the audio, and so it doesn't run through the OS, and it's harder to route it from one app, from one software to another. So I'm not gonna explain how to route the audio from sequencer to OBS, cause it's gonna be different for everyone. I'm gonna explain how I do it in my case. I use an RME card and basically what I do is I create a loop. I connect an optical cable from the eight outs to the eight ins, it's the ADAT, and uh, I route the ADAT one, two outputs from Cubase and then it goes out and literally goes back in and then I go to OBS and I select the ADAT one, two inputs. That's basically what I do and I do the same thing for the mics and everything that I want to go to OBS. So these two guys right here, it's just one cable, here's the input and the output of the optical cables and it's eight channels of digital ADAT and this is my RME routing configuration. You can take a screenshot if you are using the same interface. And then the last thing that you need to do is go into OBS and select this input for the audio. But there are a million different ways of doing this. If you are on PC, you can use a voice meter and route the audio internally in your computer from one app to another. If you are on Mac, then you can use loopback, very easy to use, or um, Source Elements Nexus Pro. It basically is like a plugin that you can insert in a channel or in the master bus in your sequencer, and then it creates sort of like a virtual interface that Zoom or OBS or another software will recognize and you can use it as the mic input. We actually use that one as well for our master classes because it also allows to send audio remotely from one sequencer to another remote sequencer and then from that sequencer we route the audio to Zoom or to OBS. The second question was, how do we stream the master classes, the ones that I don't teach myself, the remote classes that we do with guest composers and mixing engineers? Basically, we stream everything from here. We receive the audio and video signal from the teacher. The audio is gonna be either Nexus Pro or directly from Zoom, and the video is gonna be Zoom. If you wanna keep it simple, just do Zoom. Make sure that the audio, um, the original audio option is activated and the teacher is sending you a stereo audio. And then basically, I just create an OBS view that takes the video and audio from the different sources and then I send that to Restream that streams it to Facebook and YouTube. And if there are students that need to be with the teacher live, then we just share the Zoom link to them and then they can participate live in the class. Tomorrow we've got a masterclass with Dennis Sands, so I'm gonna cut the video here and this is how it looks in action. Today we've got the Dennis Sands assignment revision for the first time. Dennis Sands is mixing engineer in Hollywood, the Avengers, uh, uh, Alice in Wonderland, and uh, he's reviewing the music for the students. The students upload the track like a week before and Dennis reviews the track and then send Dennis the Zoom link and he connects. Zoom is this one here. Then after that, we uh, capture this image into OBS, this is OBS, Streamlabs OBS, and then from OBS, we stream directly to Restream, and we stream to three places, to YouTube and the main Facebook group, and the second main, uh, Facebook group, just as a backup. This is the signal that we are streaming, and this is the, the Facebook group, and it gets recorded in the Facebook group, gets recorded in YouTube, and then it gets recorded internally in the computer as well, as well as in Zoom, just as a backup. So we are doing four recordings and streaming to three places at the same time. We've got 50 people watching live in the group and then the five students in Zoom that are going to receive the feedback directly from Dennis. that's all from me. Thanks for watching. In the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain how to create a setup like this for streaming and teaching under $1,000. So if you're interested, subscribe and hit the notification bell because the algorithm is going to let you know when I publish the video. But I didn't want it to include it here because I think it's too much information and it would make the video too long. 
But again, that's all. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.